Hello everyone, welcome back to another in our series of instructional videos for the USM 100. Uh, today I'd like to go over just basic operation and uh, show you many of the uh, touch features of the instrument, uh, many of the specific menus, uh, the command bar, the sidebar, and some of the other basic controls of the instrument. Um, one question we have a lot is can you operate a touch screen with gloves? And today I'll show you that yes you can. I have basic latex work gloves on. So just going around the screen you see the instruments booted up. Uh, a couple of features unique to the instrument. On the, on the left edge of the screen we see the command bar. Uh, the command bar has uh, various icons on it depending on the context in which you're operating. If you have a an app open and running. Uh, the icons will be different on the command bar and they may be different depending on what panel of the app you're running. If it's an inspection panel, a calibration panel, you know, depending on the panel type, you may also have some different uh, commands available on the command bar. Uh, the Wayguide icon at the top of the, the command bar is used to change pages. Right now this command bar is very simple, only has one page. Uh, the plus icon is what you would use to add a new app to the instrument. Let's just take a second and look at the settings uh, that are available, sort of the back menus of the instruments. The settings are available down here in the lower left corner, the three bar icon. Press that, you get a, a number of uh, selections. Home will always take you back to the app desktop. The gear icon is your actual settings. There's a number of uh, settings menus back here. These are all available. Uh, we'll go into those in more detail in another video. Uh, you have the files manager. Each of the apps installed on the instrument will have its own folder. You touch on the apps folder. Underneath that are all of the data set files, the reports, the screen captures everything that you've saved from that app. Uh, screen captures are shown as uh, JPEG files, reports as PDFs. Uh, for those two items, if you do a long hold on the file name, it will pop open a preview. So there's the screen capture that I had saved. I can hit the back button to go back. If I do that same action on a report file, I get a PDF viewer. I can go forward and backwards on pages, I can zoom in, I can scroll up and down, I can have a look at my report, and each report includes at least one screenshot. So if we go back, go back to our settings panel, uh, the next icon is our setup for P, uh, USM 100 PC Live. Uh, this is uh, PC software that can link through Ethernet. Uh, that basically provides all the functionality on the instrument on the PC with the instrument being the front end for ultrasonics. Uh, we have Inspection Works Connect, uh, long distance internet connectivity uh, for others, and a shutdown icon. So let's go back to the desktop and we will launch our app. So I launch the app by just pressing and holding on the app. It gives me two options at Startup, Launch, and Resume. Launch will start the app from the first panel using the factory default settings uh, for that app or the, the default settings that were uh, placed there by the app creator. Resume will pick up where you left off the last time you closed the app. So if you've got a complete calibration done, you're ready to go inspect, you can close the app and when you get on site you can choose resume rather than launch and it will open to the same place in the app that you were when you shut down with all of the same settings and calibrations in place. Uh, for now we're just going to go ahead and launch this one, start from the beginning. Okay, and it's going to bring up the first panel of the app and now we can take a look at some of the special features uh, on the USM 100. You'll notice the command bar, now that we're in the app, has quite a few more icons to it. We can scroll up and down through the, the command bar, or we can hit the Waygate button and go page by page through the command bar. Okay. 
there's a little uh, number in a circle right beside the, the Waygate icon that tells you which page of the, the command bar you happen to be on. Some of the key features of the command bar, the right arrow and left arrow are panel advance and panel back. So each app has multiple panels. Uh, you can move through the panels by hitting the forward and back buttons. Right underneath that is the freeze, the snowflake, and auto 80 is another key feature of, uh, of this instrument. If you have your gate A over top of a signal, you hit the auto 80 button, it will adjust the gain automatically to make that 80% screen height. It's actually not always 80. You have the choice of uh, choosing a different amplitude that you would like to uh, have the automatic gain control set to. Uh, that's on one of the menus uh, that we can have a look at a little bit later. Underneath that is uh, envelope clear. So if you happen to have the envelope mode turned on, you can reset the envelope with that button. One right below that is DB step. So you'll notice up here in the gain control, uh, there's a little step icon and right beside it a number. That is how much your gain will change each time you increment or decrement gain. So whether you're using the scroll wheel or whether you're using the, the uh, gain switch. The, there's a little rocker switch on the back right under your index finger when you're holding the instrument. Uh, you can increment or decrement the gain by clicking one end or the other of that or you can hold it down to move continuously. By changing DB step, uh, as I just did there, I hit it a couple of times. Now DB step is showing as 1 DB. So each time I hit up or down, it's going to change by 1 DB. Okay, so that's the, the command bar. Uh, the other icons we can go into in another video. Okay. Uh, the next special feature is you go around, we'll just kind of go around the instrument clockwise and uh, spiral inward. So up here in the, the top status bar on the left hand side is a drop down where you can change uh, panels of the app directly. So this app has five or six panels. If I wanted to go to the probe angle calibration, I would just touch that one and it will take me directly to that panel of the app. I can do the same thing and go back to my setup. Okay. Going across, there's an area for icons that indicate status uh, or state within the instrument. We haven't done any calibration so far, so the only icon showing up there right at the moment is the icon that indicates I'm in pulse echo mode. Uh, if we were to go to the pulse receiver menu, turn dual mode on, that icon would change to indicate dual mode. Over here in the right hand, upper right hand corner is the battery status monitor. There are two little graphical indicators, one for each of the batteries. There are two batteries in this instrument. One is built in permanently. The other is accessed through a door here on the bottom. You can hot swap that one. Uh, while the instrument's in operation, you can open the door, pull that battery out, put in a freshly charged battery, and you're ready to continue operation. Okay. Down at the bottom of the screen is another uh, status area. Right now it's just showing the name of the app that's running. But if the instrument wants to show you prompts, uh, ask you to take actions, give you warnings, those will all appear as text messages in this bar at the bottom um, in various different colors. Uh, you know, red and yellow, of course, deserves immediate attention. Green and blue used for prompts to just guide you through certain actions. Okay. The next uh, feature to the instrument uh, is that each panel of the app will have a special sidebar menu. The sidebar is accessed by pressing here at the left edge of the A scan and swiping your finger to the right. The sidebar is put away by just putting your finger down somewhere in the sidebar and swiping it back to the left. So swipe it out and you get a menu that is custom for each one of the panels of an app. There are some default menus based on the panel type, whether it's calibration, inspection, what have you. Um, or the app author can add controls to this or hide controls, uh, whatever makes sense for the, the app. The key thing is that this 
menu is generally the most frequently used parameters for whatever task uh, that panel of the app is assigned to. So in this case it's just a basic setup so there's a couple of common um, controls for uh, initial setup if you will, some choices about uh, probe and you know display range so you notice when I open a numeric parameter, I have a basic scroll control. I can swipe down, I can swipe up to decrement and increment the number. If I have a particular number in mind, you notice there's a little calculator, a little keypad icon there. If I touch on that, it brings up a keypad. I can go right to eight inches, okay, done. And I have eight inches of range selected. So we can swipe the sidebar back away. Another special menu that is available at all times is the gain menu. Notice the gain control is prominent here in the upper left corner. Uh, if I touch the gain control, it opens a gain menu, uh, a collection of things that are specific to gain control in the instrument. Here again is our gain step. So I can select that directly or I can hit the DB step over here on the oops, let's close that back to there. I can also adjust DB step using the dedicated icon on the command bar. Uh, transfer correction, other gain pertinent items are on this menu. Close that by just hitting the gain control another time. Now, uh, various data views also have menus that are specific to them. In the case of the A-Scan, we access the A-Scan menus by tapping the A-Scan. And we see menu buttons appear on the left edge of the, the A-Scan. If I close that, tap the A-Scan, the menu buttons appear. They only appear for about two seconds. But if you tap, select one of them, now the menus stay up for a longer, uh, they'll stay up for as long as the menu is open. Going top to bottom, we have a scan menu. Next one down is probe and material. So these are all parameters that describe the material that you're inspecting and the probe itself. Below that is the pulser receiver menu. Pulser voltage, pulse width, rep rate, damping, uh, filters, all the normal selections. You would expect uh, ultrasonic controls. Okay. Below that is an A-Scan display menu called UT Setup. Uh, here you have lots of controls over your inputs and outputs, um, things like that. Next menu down is Gates. And this menu, it, again, has some context sensitivity. We have one, set of, one menu for the Gates, and by selecting Gate A, B, or C at the top, you get the controls for that particular gate. Now, one thing uh, in the USM 100, because of the touch screen, it's a lot handier normally to adjust the gate simply by clicking on, or touching on the gate and dragging it around on the screen. Uh, you can set uh, delay, width, and threshold all by simply grabbing one edge or the other edge of the gate itself or grabbing just the threshold. And you see when you let up the, whoops, when you let up the matching parameter uh, moves as well. Or I can come in here if I just knew I wanted to set that straight to 20%. I can set it to 20% and everything synchronizes that way. Okay. Uh, so that's all the, the basic menu controls for the instrument. Uh, now, continuing on around, we see a number of readouts. This particular panel has six readouts, four small and two large. One of the very nicest features of the USM 100 is if I don't see a readout there that I like, I can change it just like that. So let's say instead of... Uh, SB, I'd like to see a different readout here. If I just touch on SB to peak, you notice it picks, it pops up a selection box. Inside the selector, the top choice is always one of the gate readouts. 
and you see we were all we already had SB selected sound path for gate B so we get an explanation of what each of these means right below gates is whatever evaluation mode we have chosen for the instrument right now this one's selected as DB ref um, that is sen uh, contact sensitive to the selected evaluation mode so we can sh look in a minute and see how that changes but again you have just the readouts uh, relevant to the chosen evaluation mode and below that are scan uh, controls. The instrument has uh, positional encoder inputs so when you're doing a B scan or a C scan these are various readouts that are relevant to physical position. Okay, So if we go back to gate and let's say I wanted to see A percent A now amplitude in gate A is the selected readout. If I want to change one of these large ones you know, let's say I want to see amplitude in gate B now that one's amplitude and gate B. Just that quick and easy to change the selected uh, readouts to see what you'd like to see. Okay. Let's go to our evaluation menu for a second. Evaluation panel, if you will. Uh, if we tap the A scan, we get a special menu down here that's the evaluation menu. Uh, it's a little checklist icon. Notice we have DB ref selected at the moment. If I come in here and choose DAC instead, now our evaluation mode menu has all of the controls relevant to setting up DAC or TCG. Um, notice also over here on the command bar we got a couple of new icons. There's a little caliper icon that is our calibrate button and right below that is a clear. Um, it's sort of a squeegee wiping things clear. Uh, that would clear a, a calibration. And you notice down here in our prompt bar, it's saying place probe and calibration block at a certain distance and press the calibrate button to start setting up our DAC. Okay. And if we swipe out our sidebar, we notice that the sidebar now has controls relevant to the DAC as well. So rather than uh, taking two steps to open a menu for evaluation like that. I keep missing the button. Uh, I can also simply swipe out the sidebar and there quickly and easily are the controls I need for setting up my DAC. Swiping it back. Okay. When I'm all done with my app and I'm ready to quit, I can hit settings, home, it closes the app and takes me back to the desktop. So that's the, the basic operation of the USM-100 using uh, the various touch controls. Uh, thank you for joining me. And if you have any technical questions, as always, please reach out to remote service at bakerhughes.com. And we'll be glad to help you out. Thank you.